Hi everyone, I'm Mara Webster with InCreative Company and thank you so much for tuning in to one of our talks today. We are a year-round digital talk series bringing you the best creative voices across film, television, and theater. And today we're joined by the fantastic Josh Rubin and Aya Cash. Josh is the writer, director, and lead actor of Scare Me and Aya Cash uh, co-stars Up Against Him. And Josh, I wanted to start by asking you about the script writing process because it's such, you know, it's almost the entire movie is a two-hander um, and it's so dialogue heavy, but obviously there's a lot of kind of exposition and a lot of movement within a minimal space. So how did it present a really unique challenge in terms of the screenwriting process compared to other scripts that you've been working on? Um, that's a great question. I mean, the screenwriting process just happened very quickly. I kind of barfed it out in about three days and um, I wrote angry, uh, so, so to speak. I had a bit of an engine, you know, it was sort of the beginning of the me Too movement. I had a lot of idols that were sort of being outed as monsters, and I was I was excited and angry as I wrote about um, sort of exploring not that same type of character, but just about the idea of gender dynamics and certainly a man um, uh, shrinking in the greatness of a woman and that very specific sort of dynamic. So that engine got me barfing this thing out in a matter of a few days, and also I think you know in, in kind of dusting off dusting cobwebs off of older ideas, other story ideas, I was able to sort of turn it into a, you know, fashion and anthology movie that, you know, doesn't quite leave the campfire, so to speak, that was all in one place. So I, I marched into it knowing I have boundaries. I, it's got to be for this low cost. It's got to be in one location. I want to have great moments with a fantastic actor and actors, small cast, um, and uh, I want it to be a sound designer's movie. I want it to be a, um, a composer's film as well. So, um, you know, no special effects, but all soundscape and shadow and, um, and just kind of, you know, ultimately be one of those movies that you can pop on in the background and, and, and enjoy a bit of escapism. Yeah, and then I, uh, there was something interesting that you said about you felt like this was a script and, and a project that either it was going to really, really work and be successful, or it was just going to kind of not miss the mark because it was obviously a risky project to jump into. And I was really interested in what it was specifically about Josh's vision as a creative collaborator that you saw that you really wanted to jump into and take that risk with this project. I mean, partly it's just I believed in Josh. He's very smart and very funny. And uh, I, I had never really seen him fail before in anything that he'd tried. I'm sure he has them, but <laughs> I didn't have access. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, it's really just trusting him. I thought it was a really fun, cool idea. And yeah, whether it works or not, you can't control that as an actor coming onto a project. You just have to have a lot of faith. And, and uh, I trust people more than anything else. So even if I'm, uh, if I think a script is good, uh, that's one thing, but I have to really trust the, the person who I'm going to be making it with because that's ultimately what's going to be on screen. And so I just believed in Josh and was like, he he'll figure it out no matter what. He'll make it work. And if I suck, he'll edit me well. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was also really interested in what your, but for both of you, what your preparation process looked like in terms of your performances, because it's such a different type of performance and is asking you to do very different things. And again, you know, you have that limited space and a lot of the character details aren't necessarily put forth in a traditional way. It's not that we're seeing you in different locations with different relationships. It's really just this singular moment. So how did that force you to prepare in a very different way for developing these characters from the way that you normally would? I can say from my perspective, it had to all be technique. I actually talked to Jim Cummings who did Thunder Road, who acted, wrote, directed, and was sort of, even though I've self-directed before in <clears throat> thousands of, you know, shorts for college humor and other, you know, small, small, short, short things and platforms. This was very different, so, sort of just like, I, I brain farted essentially. It was just kind of like, how do you do this? And he's like, well, you have to at one point drop the leadership you know, um, relinquished it to someone, which in this case was my cinematographer, Brendan Banks, you watch me, make sure I don't suck. And for me, it was a lot of technique. It was, all right, let's drop the, still being a good leader and running a set, learning lines and making sure that I had all that buckled up and, and fastened before I went into, you know, the process of being a producer, being a leader and, and, and everything else. So for me, I was, you know, I, I, I sort of cheated. I wrote to my ability to, you know, make funny sounds and do physical comedy and, you know, um, um, with, with, the, with the excited initiative to, to work with Aya. Um, 
Yeah, I wouldn't say my prep is actually so different for something like this, except like listening to the Crip Keeper before doing a Crip Keeper, which I did listen to it before. <laughs> but really also listening to Josh and, and you know, sort of throwing out an idea or, and, and going with whatever he thought would be best. Um, uh, you know, and, and following the director on that. You know, we didn't have a ton of rehearsals or a time to play or do anything like that on a small movie like this. So it's really about on the day, just like making huge choices and being like, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> like, let's go that way. Or mm -mm, don't do that, sweetie. Not, he didn't, he never called me sweetie. I just want to be clear. <laughs> but don't, don't do that. Uh, you know, uh, let's go a different way kind of thing. Yeah. Given that you were mentioning just now that there wasn't much time for rehearsal or preparation and you filmed the whole thing in about 14 days, I was really interested in the use of space. It, you know, it's taking place in this singular location. It's not a very big location. It's not like there's other rooms to move into. And the way that you really use every single corner and every single space of it is really fascinating. So it's really interested in the process of mapping out the choreography and how you really were going to use the best corners of this tiny log cabin for each specific moment within the scene. It really, um, that's a great question. You know, it, it really helped, um, again, for me to be able to put that part of the movie away or kind of compartmentalize it and just think, okay, so this story is going to be all about or in this area by the fireplace or with these two chairs. You know, adjacent to that, once we finish the story by the two chairs, we're going to simply move over a little bit, favor the door in the background, do a door gag, continue the scene with the two of us, whatever speaking by that door until Aya leaves, et cetera. Um, so the process was really sort of going like, what's the, if we lit the room, so to speak, if our source is the fireplace and our gaffer, Albie made this incredible apparatus from scratch that was essentially rotating um, bulb lights to sort of create firelight. Um, and that was the source that we would just sort of bring around to light the room. That was all we had time to do. It was just, you know, sort of going what what feels like the natural movement of this um, of uh, of the um, you know of the, of these stories and where it takes us, and and we essentially just went in <clears throat> into tech and took photos of the room. You like how I had to demonstrate it, um, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> and then and then that sort of helped to just to kind of break the the film down as we um, as we went. It was kind of like doing theater, like or like college theater when you've got some boxes and you're going to turn them into something else. And and that's that was actually really exciting to me. This idea that like we're sort of using what's there and and what we have. And um, I, I don't know. I, I feel like sometimes uh, more interesting things come out of limitations than when you have everything in the world. The sort of tyranny of choice. Uh, you just got to sort of go with it. Yeah. Did you find Aya that, you know, there was kind of a necessity, especially because of the fact that there, there's very minimal lighting to have specific choreography that Josh would map out for you? Yeah, I mean, there would be, but he was also really great about like when we sort of do a rehearsal that, that, you know, if you want to do something, you can do something, we'll figure it out as well. So it wasn't like a don't go in that corner. We can't, you know, it was more like, we'll figure it out here. Here's the idea. Here's the shape or like, if you can stay here, but there was never sort of like a, any shutdown of ideas because of, uh, because of what he had said. Yeah. And for you, Josh, you know, in terms of needing to come in with a very specific idea of what you wanted and what you needed to move everything forward as fast as it needed to happen, what were kind of the most valuable elements of the pre-production process for you in terms of directing that you really, really needed to make sure were fully buttoned up before you walked onto set that first day? Uh, learning my lines, um, which, I, which I wasn't fully, <clears throat> I wasn't fully learned um, but getting it, getting the acting stuff squared away, it's, I, I, unfortunately, that was lowest priority for me. And so having Brendan, having my DP be my eyes and ears to sort of go, his secret code for me was, are you sure you don't want another one? Um, so when, when I would suck or when I would be rushing for the sake of wanting to keep the day moving, want to keep people comfortable, that was very necessary for me to kind of, you know, again, relinquish that control, listen to him. Oh my gosh, we have a kitty too. She's probably gonna walk in front of us. Um, <clears throat> but the other piece of it was, you know, being a good leader and making sure that on this tiny, uh, on this tiny shoot, that there was like hot breakfast. You know what I mean? Like the first day, our first day of shooting was the coldest day in eight years in upstate New York. 
And I walked in and because we were trying to save money, God bless my line producer, but you know, there were muffins and bagels. And I was like, okay, so we've got to make sure that there's eggs. And I thought of that and had to think of that before, you know, my scene in the back of a car, which I could kind of, I hate to say phone in, but that was again, lowest priority when you're multi hyphening. Um, so uh, it, I, I, for me, it was a lot more prioritizing the, the leadership and the comfort of folks that were frankly going well out of their way to, to make this little, this little project come to life. I'm Josh so found out that my favorite candy bar was score bars, which are not like in bodegas here and like ordered me score bars. So like I would show up and there'd be score bars or sometimes there'd be a juice, you know, when I wasn't feeling good. He, at, he sent a masseuse once. I mean, I have been on some big budget things and never got half of the, the kindness and like thoughtfulness uh, of what Josh did, you know, for cast and crew to try to sort of just knowing that it was cold, it was hard, but it, you know, wanting to say like, I see you, thank you for being here. And it was so above and beyond. I would never expect that, but now I expect that all the time. <laughs> now you've got high standards. And in terms of that, I did that kind of translate into the way that Josh communicated with you in terms of giving notes and giving feedback on scenes as you were filming them to make sure that it was a really safe environment to kind of try out different things, explore different versions of a scene and feel that safety net of trust with him. Yeah, I mean, it's, I, doing what he did is kind of miraculous. I don't know how he was able to both star in it and direct it at the same time. It's a really weird, bizarre thing. So we'd be in the middle of the scene sometimes and he'd be doing it and he'd just stop himself and go back because he knew he needed to do it differently. He was like editing while we were doing it. Mm -hmm. So it was like, he has so many things in his head and it's like, a re it is, it's a really technical process. My version of it is because I'm not doing all the other things is a little less technical so it was really about like okay like how do we how do we get into the flow of a scene while also making sure <laughs> we have everything and he was very supportive of when I was like hey can we just do one where we go all the way through so that I can like get a get a run up um, because he knows what he needs and how to do this and that we have time and you know of course I'm like but can we do just one so that we can you know and he was very kind about letting me do that sometimes when I felt like oh well, you know what I'm not getting this moment because I need the five lines before. That's, That's so such a, a, an integral part of directing that I find and something that I'm still fascinated with I just came off of a, of a bigger film with 10 actors <clears throat> so you sort of hear about you know um, that process of as a director, you need to learn every actor's kind of psychology and way of working. Part of that is having simply a conversation with them in advance of the project. How do you like to be directed? Which a lot of the actors I just worked with were like, no one's ever asked me that before. You know, we kind of met first day, whatever. It's like, well, that's important because if you need a run up, um, if you need context, or if you do, you know, what Kevin Donahue calls a three in a rows, if that's your style, then the director knows, okay, well, I'm going to, with, with this actor, I'm going to sort of say, okay, you self-edit and this one, you give a run up and, and that learning that process or just kind of getting that dialed in is a huge part of how we did this in 14, <laughs> 14 days and it was, it was wonderful. Yeah, I was also really fascinated by the voice work that you both do through your performances. You know, beyond the, the performance itself, there's so much specificity in terms of the different voices that you pull into the telling of these stories. And there's clearly a lot of thought that goes into that. And I was really interested in kind of what that discovery process was for where you were gonna pull those into the story, where it made sense and what those voices ultimately were gonna be in different spaces for each of these characters that you're representing on screen. I mean, you know, we would, I, I sort of, again, you know, I'm, I'm biased. I wrote to knowing that I could do or wanted to do X, Y, and Z voice, but you know, um, I, I'm not sure what your experience was. I know, you know, with, with, with grandpa, you sort of were like, what if I did it as a Russian, an old Russian man? I never thought of that. And it made it so much more interesting and fun, especially as I oscillates between two, two characters. That's not quite actually how it happened. What happened was I pitched that she was Russian. <laughs> oh, <that's... laughs> I was like, what if Franny's Russian? Like, let's just do the whole thing. <laughs> oh, that's right, the whole and, movie. And like a good director who knows what a story needs. He was like, mm, no, but why don't you do grandpa in Russian? <laughs> so he let me do that. <laughs> Get the color out. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> it's so incredible. What I, want to, I want to thank you both for taking time today to talk so much about the movie. It's, it's such a fantastic piece to watch and I really feel like it's something that film students and acting students alike should all be really studying as an example of what you can do with minimal cast and minimal space, but in the best way. So thank you so much to both of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mara. It's such a pleasure talking to you. Stay safe. <laughs>